So you've created your report through the wizard, fantastic, but really we're going to have to slam the brakes on. Um, the reason being is the wizard's great if you're starting out and you're not familiar with reporting services, but very, very quickly it will get on your nerves. Now, the reason I say that is because although it's great and it's, and it's sort of laid out the formatting correctly, Where's your logo? You may want to have a corporate head letter heading. Um, where's your ability to um, adjust um, your text because you may need to change the font and so forth. Sure, you can do it after the wizard's created, but generally you want to really set this up on the initial stage. So anything you drag and drop in will then contain that formatting um, and all the structure that you want. So really I have a gripe about wizards and that's just purely because I create reports day in day out I, I don't really need the use of them and if you really want to understand reporting services properly neither should you um, so really from this point onwards I won't be touching wizards un unless I absolutely have to if I'm just trying to prove a point of concept a proof of concept I'll just quickly generate a wizard for the, for those regards but nothing else so um, what have we got well we've got the employee list report here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that there for the time being but I'm, I may want to change it again in a bit um, so what I'm going to do is just right click on the reports folder and I'm not going to choose add new report because if I do that I go into the wizard what you need to do annoyingly is right click and choose add new item and then this brings up the template list of things that you can do and as you can see there's only three options well, we've already covered that one and that one so power of deduction means it must be that one which is the report so immediately it gives you a name um, of report one um, so what we want to do um, is give it a meaningful name so I'm going to call it employee list again um, but we'll just call it real at the end and then I'll click on add and what that does is it just dumps you into a blank report where we can control it. So in the wizard, we didn't go through really any of the options which appeared on the left hand side. So we're going to go through that on this tutorial. So to start with, um, we haven't got a data source. So where do we go for data sources? Well, what we do is we go to the new button here and it gives you a list of options that you can have. So you've got a new data source, new data set. So have we already learned from previous videos what the differences are? Well, hopefully you do. Um, a data source is actually the target destination of where your data is kept. A data set is the actual name of the data um, in regards to the SQL statement. So your SQL statement, which is give me all employee information, would be stored in a data set, whereas the data source would be the name of the server and the database you're connecting to. So in both cases, I can't really create a data set until I've done a data source but Microsoft knows this so if you do a data set it generally first of all asks you what's the data source well I haven't got anything appearing in here so I can create new um, but at which point it then goes back to the same screen we saw in the wizard um, and it says an embedded connection well I don't want that because I've already got my data source here so I want to choose use a shared data source click on the drop down box Adventure works and click on OK. Oh, first of all, the data source name. I'm just going to call this um, DSET again um, and Adventure works. Ooh, works like that. And then we'll just OK. And then OK. Um, oh, sorry, not OK again because now we've got the data set itself. So we'll call this uh, DSET employees and then we can go to the query designer or just type it in. Now if you've been following straight on from my previous video you'll find that um, in the SQL we've already got the script already open um, from the view of human resources v employee. So again I'm just going to copy and go back into bids and paste with the one exception that needs to be adjusted at the top we get rid of top 1000 because I want all just in case there's more than a thousand and then I click on OK now what happens then is it goes away and it actually refreshes um, the data so it knows what fields there are now this was one of the constant banes in 2005 if, you, if you're using 2005 um, 
I'm still using it at work. We are slowly migrating over, so I feel your pain. Um, for example, if a new field gets added or a field gets removed, you need to refresh your data set so it updates what fields are available. Because it would just sit there and say, yeah, email address is there, even though it may actually not be there anymore. So you need to refresh your data sources quite often. In 2008, this is less needed because it, it does it on the fly for you, because it knows that you want to choose the available fields which, which are um, on your data set. So what do we do? Well we've got a data set there, we've actually defined our data source as well so we're good to go. So do we just drag and drop? Well yeah sure you can um, but notice what it's doing is just putting EXPR on. So what, what does that mean? Well generally you need to right click on your text box and choose expression. And what it's doing is it's putting some god awful text on the screen saying some employee ID. Why on earth do I want to add the employee IDs together? Well the computer doesn't know any different and it's just saying okay well you're just trying to put a field into a text box on the report so I need to actually choose the entire data set and what field it is now in this case because it's the employee ID it thought and saw it as a number therefore it assumes you want to add it together well I don't want to do neither of those things because I actually want a table I want to actually show that information so if you have dragged and dropped any information onto this page just drag with the mouse over both of them and hit delete so it's just back to um, being itself again an empty thing and it's actually telling you what to do on here it's saying to add an item on the report drag an item from the toolbox well at the moment we're in report data the next tab along is tool box so let's just click on to that and there's our list of tools and the one in particular we're after is tables so you can either drag and drop or you can click now the difference is just if I drag and drop it on it just puts three columns in that location there now if I just highlight and delete this time I'm going to click and now you get a pointer so you can actually specify how big you want the table to be so there's a couple of differences now I tend to not drag I just um, I don't create a table what I what I tend to do is I just go over the icon and drag and drop it on I don't create it by dragging to create the table very big the reason being is the column widths are about ideal for what I'm after um, so now with that done I'll just move that a little bit further up to the top you'll notice it'll snap to the corners as well when you do this so now we go to the um, report data tab again at which point we can now start dragging and dropping our fields in. Now it's important to know where do we put them. Well it's sort of giving you a clue in the actual diagram. Can you see how head is greyed out and it's just showing a square bracket in data? Well that's where it's got to go so you just drag and drop and what it does immediately is it works out the heading name. Notice that the field is employee ID all as one word but it identifies the space this is another coding best practices um, if you try and put your fields um, starting with a capital letter where there's a natural break so it breaks the field up so for example first name is capital F and a capital M when you actually drag and drop it on it knows where the break is and that's how I do things and it makes my life a lot easier later on so all I'm going to do is just drag first name I'm gonna go and do last name again and um, I've run out of space so simply treat it a bit like Word if you're doing tables right click insert column to the right and I'm just going to add a few more now you can play around with this to heart's content but it's just basically to get a basic report onto the screen so I'm going to put in the job title and I'm also going to put in the email address and that's my lot I think that'll do me now formatting has to be dealt with in a moment however if we now click on to preview you'll notice now that you now have your report you can see all the information appearing now remember you've not deployed it yet all we're doing is we're working on putting the fields onto the screen so how do we format? Well, it's pretty straightforward. What we can do is we can drag with the mouse and highlight the individual cells, or you can select the whole lot, but there is a slight difference between them. Um, for example, if you run it and there is no data available, you may want it to actually say no data available. So what you will find is in your properties, if you can't see it, view and you should see properties window inside properties making sure you have the table selected there should be a particular tooltip here saying where there's no records um, let's have a look let's find it there it is no rows message so I'm gonna say um, no records here now you don't see that on the design you won't see it on the preview because there is data available however what 
will happen is on the formatting, if you click on the box there, you are configuring the formatting for text overall and one of the text overall options is no rows here. So if I um, just go in here, notice that the formatting of your font and everything is all greyed out. I can only change it in the properties here. So I can expand it and then change the font size. So I'll um, change that to let's say 15. And that's obviously not done anything to the report. So if I now highlight the cells like this, notice now my font options are now available. So I'll just go back into properties though and do it within here. Expand it and choose um, 12 points. And all being well, there we go, it's made it bigger. So you can play around with the properties, but that's a separate video where we go into it into more detail. But for this one, we have now created another report from scratch. So hope you keep tuned.